attempts with small hands is not fun. Now, they're not as challenging as fingered octaves, but it's really important to take great care when practicing any extension on the violin or viola, especially in the lowest positions. Now, there are a lot of excellent tutorials on the internet on how to play tense, but I did notice that most of them are demonstrated by men or in general by people with larger hands and longer fingers. Of course, nothing against that. They're great tutorials, I think. But for all of you out there with smaller hands who maybe watched those same videos and felt some discouragement perhaps, or maybe you need some additional guidance for something that's a little bit more relatable, I hope that this video will give you some reassurance. So here is what a small female hand might look like when playing a tenth in the lowest position, and I'll even use the G and D strings to demonstrate. So I'll play uh, a C with my pinky and an A flat with my first finger. This is what my hand looks like. So as you can see, even as I reach down with my first finger, I'll do it again. You can see that my pinky is straight. Now, it's not locked, it's not entirely locked. This is what it would look like if it's locked. It's just straight. So, evidence with facts right here. And for, uh, for reference, if I measure my pinky from this joint here to here, it will be exactly five centimeters. But you know, that doesn't really matter. It's extensions are not so much about the size as it is about uh, how we do it and also about conditioning. And uh, it also, of course, varies from uh, one hand to another based on the relationship between one finger and another and also the span of our hand and how we position our hand on the instrument. All that matters into account and we're going to talk about it in this video. So here are four tips to play tense with small hands and I will throw in a bonus idea that you can consider at the end of this video, so please stick around. But before we start, um, please be smart about practicing tense or any extension, of course. Stop if you are experiencing pain, you know, be smart about it. If you are taking lessons, please consult with your teacher. If you're not taking lessons, I'm just a random violinist on YouTube, and this video is not a replacement for a private lesson. Also, do not start learning tense if you don't already have a healthy left hand foundation and frame. That is really important. Tip number one. Before we start our extension, we want to minimize the contact that we have with the neck of the violin because that creates friction and prevents us from reaching further. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the base with our first finger here. Actually, I'll put my hand over here somewhere in fourth position to show. So we'll remove this over here. So usually it's there by default when we have our frame, but we are going to leave the frame. That's what an extension is. We leave the hand frame, which is our kind of home base. Now, tip number two, going from here, we're going to reach back. We never reach up for the tenth, we reach down. You can check for yourself how far can you reach with the pinky up versus how much can you reach down with the first finger. Clearly the first finger can reach much further and it's safer for the hand and will prevent injuries. So here is an excellent exercise that you can do to practice reaching down. So we'll actually start in a high position. So let's take seventh position. I'll play A and we'll play an octave actually. We'll start with an octave. So pinky is going to stay down. But with my first finger, I'm going to go down from the octave to the ninth and then down to the tenth. I'll show you again from this angle, starting with an octave, down to ninth. Okay. Then we're going to repeat this exercise and we're going to gradually go down the positions because as we go down, the frame will expand. So we're going down to G now, or you could go down by half step, it's up to you. First finger will go down and then down to E. Also notice that by doing it this way, octave, ninth, tenth, 
you also at the same time are listening for intonation. So now um, I'm gonna skip, I'm not gonna do every single interval and let's do D. And this is probably where we're gonna have our widest interval with tenths because that's from here, our first finger is gonna go from D to C and let's, let's say this is the widest we're gonna go, we're gonna go down to a B flat. Okay, so we make our way down. The reason we started up in the highest positions is because the frame was much smaller and we can develop right away how to feel more comfortable as we reach our first finger down. So it trains our mind and our hand to correlate the tenth as not being a super tenth position. Our ultimate goal is to minimize tension and to have as much relaxation as possible with this kind of extension. Tip number three is our thumb position. So your thumb will definitely be lower down and it's possible that your thumb will be completely underneath the neck when you play tense. It will probably be across from the second or maybe even the third finger. Um, you, so you'll experiment and see what works for you. Now do be careful and this is something that kind of happens I think to almost everybody and this definitely is something that, that I need to be careful of with myself is that be careful that the thumb doesn't start pushing up on the neck. So you see my thumb automatically wants to push up on the neck. We want to not do that because what's going to happen is if we, if we push up, if we squeeze up with the thumb, that's going to cause a chain reaction. And what I mean by that is that the fingers, they're going to respond to the thumb by pressing down on the strings just as hard, if not harder. And that's going to turn into really bad tension or worse, it can cause injury. So one way you can alleviate that is by tapping the thumb. And the fingers respond to the thumb. So by tapping the thumb, the fingers automatically find a way to release a little bit. By the way, if you're getting any value from this video so far, please give it a quick thumbs up down below to help support this channel and so that YouTube is more likely to share it with others like yourself who are seeking free support on this topic. Tip number four, and this is something that's worked for me, um, it may or may not work for everybody, and that is to put the hand lower down in relation to the neck. So that means that the knuckles, they're not gonna be up here. They're gonna be lower down. So what it does, uh, first of all, most likely the first finger, it's not going to touch the string in the same part as it normally does when it plays, you know, regular uh, notes in the hand within the hand frame. Uh, and, that, and that's okay. So for example, my first finger makes contact with the string when I play tense, right over here, like almost near the nail on the side. And that's okay. Again, the goal is for maximum relaxation and least tension possible. And we want to not press too hard into the strings. And uh, sometimes the lower hand position helps um, the natural arm weight to just kind of um, let the fingers sort of hang off the fingerboard. Um, of course, for G and D string, that's a little different because um, our shoulder is going to swing the arm around this way. But still, uh, the idea is to just let the elbow kind of um, get the fingers into the string without actually pushing down with the fingers themselves. The fingers are just kind of hooks. They're kind of just hooking onto the fingerboard. And another thing uh, related to that, it helps many people to lean the wrist just slightly backward this way so it doesn't instead of reaching back like this which is actually bad um if I, i'll do it the bad way first so if i'm reaching down like this you see how my wrist is bulging out i want to do the opposite i want to bring it as close to the instrument as possible and maybe even lean this way and this is actually a more relaxed hand position if we just hold our hand like this versus this this is actually going to cause tension you can also do a pinky vibrato test to check that the fingers are not pressing down too hard. I'm not trying to vibrate both fingers at the same time, I'm just 
focusing on the pinky here. And the first finger, is, you, as you can see, it's just laying down on its side. It's not even on the finger pad and it's fine. It's making just enough contact to play the note. Here's a bonus for those of you who've made it this far. Thank you for watching. Now, this is extra and it's something that I've thought about on and off for myself. You can consider to go to a luthier and have the back of the neck of your instrument thinned. That means get it closer to the fingerboard. Now, my violin has a pretty standard neck. It's very smooth. Um, but there are definitely violins out there with thicker necks back here. And also even some with wider fingerboards than usual over here uh, this way. Now, I've tried some instruments that were not suitable for my hand that had the thicker neck. And there was one, that, especially the ones with the wider uh, fingerboards, those were really not suitable for me. And I, there was one instrument that I really, really liked and I wanted to get it, but because of that, I could not uh, purchase it. Now, I've also tried some instruments with the thin neck thinner than this and I remember my left hand felt so light and it was pretty much flying around the fingerboard and passages felt much uh, more effortless and just my, my hand just felt lighter everything felt easier so if you know a good luthier uh, this is definitely something you can consider for yourself but of course the main thing to keep in mind is that this kind of work is a one-way trip for the instrument uh, for the neck so definitely think hard before considering going that route in the next video we're going to go over how to practice tenth specifically for intonation and once that video is released i'm going to put it in the box right over here don't forget to sign up for my bi-monthly newsletter in the description below, subscribe to this channel, share it with a friend or a colleague, and happy practicing!